Hey everybody, and welcome back to another episode. So, uh, in this episode, I am heading back to the Unreliable. I have the um, regulator I pulled out from the generator at the Botanical Gardens, and I'm pretty much ready to take off now. And I've got Pavati with me, and the vicar should be already on the ship. So, yeah, ready to take off. I certainly am looking forward to flying on a ship named the Unreliable. I'll just head upstairs and claim a room. Feel free. That was a good thing you did, Captain. Helping to bring the deserters and Edgewater folks back together. I hope you rest well on that. Thomas seemed very fond of you. He's just interested in fixing stuff. He always used to follow me around, asking me to explain what I was doing. Like a puppy, kinda. I've... not lately seen a man with a bigger or more obvious crush. I'm just glad he's alive. That he's okay. I mean, when Mr. Thompson said he was fired, we all expected the worst. Right. Well, I'd like to get back to it. I need to talk Captain, to the ship. I have detected that Edgewater's power supply is now optimal. I applaud your willingness to invest your time in the local community. What can I do for you, Captain? I have a power regulator. Do you know how to install a power regulator? Yeah, I know what I'm doing. Outstanding, Captain. Uh your aptitude for engineering will prove invaluable in the event of another catastrophic engine failure. Our engine room is located behind you, across the cargo bay, up the ladders. I'll be right back, Ada. Yeah, I sounded like I knew what I was doing, didn't I? I know what I'm doing. It's like, yeah, you put the thing in the thing, and then you put the wires in the thing, and power happens, right? That looks like it could explode at any minute. What can I do for you, Captain? I have installed the power regulator. All systems are operating within acceptable parameters. I am prepared to bring the unreliable into low altitude orbit. This should prove an adequate test of our flight capabilities. Well, let's get out of here. Well, the ship didn't blow up. That's a good sign. Against all odds, the unreliable takes flight. Oh, yeah. Now I get to talk to that crazy guy. What's his name? Phineas? We have received a communication request there from go. Dr. Phineas Wells. Good. I've been waiting to hear from him. Ah, there you are. Hale and hearty and captain of your own ship. I see you're putting the unreliable to good use. Shame about her former captain. Horrible way to die. How are you feeling, by the way? I lost track of you in that cave back there. Experiencing any, uh, unnatural drippage? Perfectly normal side effect of thawing, I assure you. Get to the point, Phineas. What you saw in Emerald Vale is happening all across the colony. Food shortages, lack of supplies, and basic necessities. We're dying. The chairman, the minister, and all their lackeys on the board are to blame. The Hope has some of the brightest minds Earth ever sent us. If we can revive the Hope's colonists, they can help us undo the board's mistakes. They can help us set things right. You need to get to Stellar Bay on Monarch. I have contacts there. They'll help me. Help 
Kratos. Find the chemicals to revive your fellow colonists. Gladys Kalkelly, lovely woman, runs a cozy little black marketing outfit on the Groundbreaker. She can get you a nav key to land on Stellar Bay. Fine, I'll go have a word with Gladys. Excellent, I'll send her a wireless. Let her know you're coming. By the way, I gave Captain Hawthorne a disguise apparatus of my own design. Cutting edge technology, years ahead of its time. I call it the Holographic Shroud. I'm sure it will prove remarkably useful to you. You'll find it in the Captain's quarters. I'll put it to good use. Thanks, Phineas. Excellent. I'll contact you once you've found a way to get to Stellar Bay. If you have any questions, come see me in my lab. And remember, don't trust the board. They'll try to win you over with promises of wealth and power, but it's a lie. The board's only interested in filling their own pockets. If we don't put a stop to them, they're going to run this colony to the ground. Transmission ended. If you are ready to depart, please select a destination on your navigation terminal. Okay, thank you, Ada. I'm gonna go and check out this uh, thingy. Disguise manipulator, or whatever he called it. Hey, cool. Holographic shroud. Yeah, I'm sure I'll figure it out. Yeah, so this is my hiding spot now. I was looking for a place that was quiet. I figured the kitchen would be louder than the hold, so here I am. Cozy like, ain't it? What do you think of the ship? That's in pretty good shape considering how hard Mr. Hawthorne ran it. It's a Yakita LHA 120, A2 model, I'm pretty sure. The Block 2 design scooshed in extra cargo space but didn't change the stock engines. Probably a touch underpowered, huh? Accurate in all particulars. I conclude you are Edgewater's board certified mechanic. That's the ship's computer. It's not intelligent, but it does a good imitation. So you're gonna call her it, not she? Though my voice is currently pitched to suggest female, I possess no gender. Any pronoun preferred by the user is acceptable. Hello! I am not a board certified mechanic. But my dad was. He taught me all he knew. Do you understand? Speech recognition is one of the many skills I have been programmed to simulate. You're not simulating it, you're doing it! I asked a question and you answered it. I am gratified you consider this facsimile convincing. What do you think, uh, Pavati? Is this safe to fly now? that we got uh, the regulator? I don't see any holes in the hull. I'll take a good squint at her, make sure everything's tip-top. But I think we're cooking with plasma torches. You can do that, you know. My dad taught me how to make grilled cheese sandwiches with a plasma torch. Did you learn your trade from your father? It sounded like it when you talked to Reed. Mostly, yeah. I lived in the maintenance office near all my life. Mr. Thompson never let me forget how funny that was. I don't see the humor. He meant funny as in odd. It's not normal for anyone to do as their parents. You take a vocational test. That decides your schooling and your career. When I tested out for maintenance, everyone figured it was on account of my dad. They were real unhappy with us. But you are actually good at this, and you enjoy it. Well, I'm good at making things work the way they ought. Not so much at doing such to somebody else's schedule. There's times I'm working deep in the guts of a loader, getting it all running perfect. Then I look up to see it's tomorrow, and I've blown another deadline. Anyhow, I, I was happy to get back home. I didn't care much for schooling. After school, you moved... Straight back to Edgewater? Yep, nothing much had changed. Everything was a little grayer, a little dirtier. Dad met me at the shuttle and gave me a big ol' hug. 
I noticed straight away that he was moving slower and stiffer. He made a little grunt when I squeezed. Did you get much time with him after you got back from school? About a year. I tried to do more of the work so he could rest. His heart gave him pains. Dad never said that he loved me, you know? I, I knew on account of him showing it. How he'd stay up late to help with my projects or listen to my fretting. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Look at the time. Sorry to bend your ear so long. And I got so much to do before this ship's in decent shape. Uh, okay. I'll see you soon, Pavadi. Okay, I, I, yeah, I get the idea for the system map, that's Nation fine. Reached a groundbreaker. That looks like a giant ship. Probably is a giant ship. Can we talk? Hmm? Oh. Hey, Captain. I heard that Groundbreaker's got a real good engineer. A lady named June Lay Tennyson? Uh, what about her? I was thinking that maybe I ought to meet her. If you got time to swing us by, I mean. I don't got much experience fixing actual spaceships. I bet you a can of Borston beans she could teach me all manner of stuff. Sure, we can go and see, uh, see her in engineering. Thanks, Captain. I'll be sure to make it worth your time. Did you want to talk about something else? Nope, it's all good. Let's disembark. Alcyon is part of the Alcyon cluster, so named because Alcyon and it's... Okay, so we've made it to the Groundbreaker, which is some kind of ship-slash-space station, I think. See, it looks like a ship, but I, I it probably is a space station. Captain, I'm in space. That's not the point. This hat was just knocked out one of my workers. Customs and inspection, right this way. Identification, please. Here you go. Captain Hawthorne, you said. Let me apologize in advance. I'm about to ruin your day. According to your ship's record, you've been flagged by the board. Your ship will be impounded until such a time as they see fit to lift it. But we've hardly been out of Edgewater long enough to get in trouble. Well, isn't this wonderful? The captain's done something to get on the board's bad side. Now, hold on. This isn't the end of the world. Probably. How do I get this resolved? You'll want to take it up with Udom Bedford, our board representative here on Groundbreaker. His office is located along the starboard wall of the promenade. Shines like a Byzantium commode. You can't miss it. Any idea why my ship was impounded? Access to that information is above my pay grade, and I've turned down three promotions so it stays that way. I shouldn't be mentioning it, but what the hell? This here, impounding your ship, it doesn't happen much. The board knows we don't take kindly to their interfering in our operations. If I had to take a guess as to why, you must have riled up someone important. Great. Well, I'll go talk to him and straighten this all out. You take the starch out of him, well, you won't hear any complaints from me. Oh, and if you're headed that way, would you mind doing me a favor? Shoot. Wanda Dorset over in sickbay. Tell her the shipment's not in yet. It's not coming in anytime soon, and if she'd be so obliged to get off my ass about it. Okie dokie. Much appreciated. Is there anything else I can help you with? 
Um, no, it's all good. I'll, uh, actually, I, I, I am looking for someone called Gladys. The fence. You'll find her in the rest and go on your left when you enter the promenade. Make sure you bring an empty belly. All right, that's great. Thank you. Be seeing you. I picked up this weird signal the other day. It was coming from Monarch. Here we go again. No one lives on Monarch. It's a waste. This is Mark Apple Cider. A hard cider for a hard cider. All right, let's go and talk. To Try not to go and talk to Lance. Can we rent an upstairs room? We interrupt your regular room. Bless my heart. A stranger come knocking on a poor old woman's door. You here for a particular reason? Or did the neighbors tell you how good my sugar cookies are? Made without a single natural ingredient, or an oven. Just like store-bought. Uh, Phineas sent me. He said you could sell me a navki to Stella Bay. Those have been the height of illegality since Stellar Bay turned their noses up at the board. You and I could be thrown to the void just for discussing such a transaction. Lucky for us, Groundbreaker's a free port. We're outside of the board's control. For the time being, at least. Now, I only have the one nav key. And they're hard to come by these days. It won't be cheap. If you find yourself lacking in the bits, I might have an opportunity you'd be interested in. Tell me about this opportunity well i find i'm in need of a ship captain with a little more of flexibility might be this could help out the groundbreaker as well as earn some bits but if you've got qualms no no qualms here let's hear your details do you know edna over in engineering sweet as a pea that one on occasion she'll pass along transmissions i might find interesting she sent me a recording of a distress signal she'd scraped from the Groundbreaker's comm array. Curious thing is, it came from an outpost called Roseway. And Auntie Cleo abandoned that place years ago. So, uh, say no more. I'm in. You've got an ear for intrigue and a nose for bits. I like that. Here's a copy of the SOS recording, complete with the coordinates. If you should find a secret worth selling, might be I could find a buyer. Corporate bigwigs will pay top bit for inside information on their competitors. The more we got the corpse fighting each other, the less time they got to meddle in our affairs. Abandon outpost, corporate secrets. I got it. Don't forget to come find old Gladys when you're done. Alright, well, I'll better be off. Any time, sweetheart. You know where to find me. Here, take a candy with you. Hey, level up. I am actually talking to the vicar much. Captain, if I could trouble you for a moment of your time, while we're on the Groundbreaker, I may have an idea for how we could find a translator. You know somebody who can read the book? I've been thinking on that. There's a former so uh, infamous philosopher scholar who fled Terra 2 some years ago. He's an expert on Bakonu. He's also who told me of the journal's presence in Emerald Vale. If anyone in this colony could translate that book, it would be him. Hmm, that sounds like a good lead, but how do we find him? That's a good question. Fortunately, we're in the perfect place to start. This is where I'd go if I wanted to get off Terra 2. Great place to pick up a ride to Hephaestus, Scylla, even Monarch. All I need is access to a data cartridge from the security terminal. Their easily hackable system keeps a registry of all crew manifests for both arrivals and departures. How will a crew manifest help us track down your scholar friend? I'll comb the last six months of departure manifest to track the Philosophist's off-world destination. Sounds good. Let's go. Thank you, Captain. Okay, I'm gonna 
dropped by the med bay now. Eh, it's the moon man. From the trailer. Well, I assume it's the same guy. I'm not going anywhere, you hear? You can't get me out of there. Please don't make a scene, Dr. Fenhill. I am not... Can't say I've seen you before. I take it you're a freighter, Captain? If you're here to better yourself, you'll have to wait. We're having a spot of trouble with our delivery service. Um... Wheeler told me to tell you to get off his ass about your shipment. Did he now? The mouth on that man. I swear his late mother'd be ashamed. He must be referring to Erion. I'm sure the fool's gotten himself into another scrape. I'm beginning to wonder if I'm ever gonna get my service mechanicals at this rate. I could try to find him. I'd be grateful if you'd spare the time. We need his delivery soon as yesterday. Last he told me, he was taking a shortcut by Scylla, an asteroid in the Charybdis Cluster. That's where I'd start, were I the adventuring type. You look out, though. The place is probably crawling with outlaws. Alright. I'll come back here in a bit. Um, yeah, I'm gonna call this video to an end here, because all I really wanted to do was get off the planet and you know, get the ship working and check out this place just a little bit. So in the next episode, I'm going to be exploring the Groundbreaker a bit more and possibly, uh, you know, certainly um, straightening out the issue of impounding my ship. Hope you're all enjoying the walkthrough. I'm loving this game so far. Uh, it's really fun. It's kind of like Fallout in space, I guess, is the best way to describe it. Um, for now, though, that's pretty much it. If you could leave a like and a comment, uh, if you haven't done so already as well, you can subscribe. You, there'll be a link in the end screen just about to come up, I think. For now, though, that's pretty much it. So until next time, you take care.